To innovate means you have to try new things, and that's certainly something Nintendo understands. In the SNES era, Nintendo had Square try making an RPG Mario game, a game that was met with positive reception across the board. But when Square ditched Nintendo for Sony's first home console, partially due to poor decisions made by Nintendo's leadership at the time, it was up to Intelligent Systems to fill the N64's RPG void. But rather than a simple Mario RPG sequel, they decided to try turning Mario and his supporting cast members into paper cutouts. What resulted was Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. On top of the usual Bowser kidnaps Peach plotline, the story also has Bowser imprisoning seven star spirits in order to claim the powerful Star Rod, a weapon that grants wishes to its owner, which includes Bowser finally defeating Mario. So now Mario's quest is a journey through this paper version of the Mushroom Kingdom to rescue seven star spirits who together can disable the Star Rod of its power. While it's not a deep story, it does add more of that RPG grand scale that fans of the genre expect. It also happened to be how I discovered the origin of the star characters who will go on to host my favorite Mario Party game two years later. Paper Mario on the N64 is a prime example of how a creative art style can hide technical limitations. Sure, coming out as the console was nearing the end of its days certainly helped its visuals, but more importantly, this doesn't look like an N64 game. You don't see blocky 64-bit characters with muddy, textured environments. Okay, in all fairness, some of the outlines are pretty blurry. But mostly what you see is an arts and crafts world running at a smooth frame rate, so players can just be immersed in this imaginative world. The sound design I found less impressive, but still decent. See, in place of any voices, even grunting, Paper Mario uses subtitles for dialogue and sound effects that sound like they're from the SNES. The sound effects for everything else sound great with the theming of the game, and the music complements the world as well. It's simple yet catchy Mario music, and scenes that are more heartfelt come with a bit more emotional music. Like the game that inspired it, Paper Mario uses a turn-based combat system, but it has key differences that separate it from the likes of Final Fantasy or even Pokemon. First of all, the points, attack, health, etc., all work with small numbers as opposed to larger numbers found in other turn-based games. Instead of 2,545 damage to a creature with 10,000 health points, you're dealing 2 points of damage to a foe with 5 health points. This structure not only helps the game be more accessible to younger and newer players, but also opens up room for the game to have more focus on its other features in a way all players can understand. One of those features that I like is being able to get a small amount of damage dealt at the start by attacking foes in the world as a way to start the turn-based battle, but that's also balanced with them being able to do the same to you if you don't have good reactions. That kind of timing also plays into the main battling itself. You can hold the control stick or the A button then release it at the right time for a more powerful attack. Or if someone's attacking you, you can actually block the attack to take less or no damage if you guard at the exact right moment. This really made combat much more engaging to me than typical turn-based games where evading attacks or taking less damage usually feels completely random to me. A big reason why I usually hate turn-based combat and avoid the whole genre. But like other RPGs, your enemies will have different strengths and weaknesses which will force you to use different attacks and strategies. Like using a hammer instead of jumping or using your allies who are really just kid versions of normal Mario baddies. And they each have their own special abilities. Some based on what their parents did in the old Mario games and others taking more creative liberties, like Goombario tattling on enemies' abilities and health points. But these allies also help you in the world, as there are a lot of items you can't reach and puzzles you can't solve without their help. So these allies are very well integrated into the adventure. There's also the badge system which has you select a limited number of badges to grant you special abilities or boosted attack points with a specific attack. It's another part of engaging strategy as you're deciding which badges to activate as you enter a new area and encounter new enemies. It's one of many things throughout the world of Paper Mario that makes your brain work. Even outside of combat, there's plenty to do in the world with running around collecting things and unlocking new doors. And sometimes playing as Peach in the castle who sneaks into another chamber to get tabs on what Bowser is up to. It all creates a good balance so that the combat is engaging but walking through the world feels like there's a purpose as well. Copies of the N64 original tend to go for $30. A decent price if you're a big RPG fan, but it's also available on Nintendo Switch Online for people who have the expansion pack and are curious to just try this game out. If you do have the expansion pack, that's the best way to play this game, but it is worth playing. And that's my review of Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. To help me produce more videos like this, please support my Patreon page. Special thanks to my current patrons here. If you like this review, check out my previous reviews of these other N64 classics, Super Mario 64 and Yoshi's Story. See you all next time!